Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for One Piece Chapter 1049. When we last left our heroes, it looked like that was going to be maybe the climax of the entire fight with Kaido. It wasn't. Uh, we got a little bit closer as Luffy throws what will be his final, what seems to be his final punch. Um, as Kaido reveals this move where he just superheats himself um, to, to attempt to sort of, you know, push Luffy back. It doesn't really work. Luffy's still on his way to hit him. Uh, as Momo tries to move Onigashima before this final hit is done. Uh, meanwhile, we get some flashbacks to just, like, the horrors of, of Orochi's reign. Uh, and speaking of dragons on fire, we cut back to Orochi, who is about to kill Hiyori. But before he can, Denjiro arrives, and finally, I think, maybe again, this is like the fifth time I've said finally, for Orochi being dead. Because that, this sure seems to be his final moment alive. Uh, and I've heard some complaints about Hiyori should, should have been the one to do it, which, like, fair enough. Well, the moment of Denjiro just, like, cutting him down was so good. Uh, but with that, all that's left is Kaido, right? Uh, and last chapter kind of ended with, um, you know, the two of them getting closer and closer to that final blow. Uh, also, as the people of, at the Fire Festival release their, you know, lanterns, wishing for freedom from Kaido and Orochi. So that's where we leave off. Let's dive right on in, chapter 1049, The World That Should Be. We have a continuation of German 66's odd emotionless excursion uh, called Why? The Book in the Lab Burned Up Freeing the Brothers. So yeah, somehow um, Yonji and, and Niji are free. I'm not sure how that happened. And maybe does one of them have like specific fire powers or is that just Sanji who has that? I don't know. Uh, but somehow they're free now. Not sure if that's tied to, you know, whoever has arrived at Whole Cake which might be either their siblings or um, there's the theory that might be the Blackbeards who have arrived. I'm not sure if that's right or not. Either way, diving right on in, we pick up where we left off uh, as Luffy continues to like push towards Kaido for that final hit. And it actually hits him, it seems like. He doesn't quite do as much damage as I think Luffy thought. Uh, but Kaido tells him, well done. Uh, but Luffy is dealing with the pain of, of Kaido's flames. And Kaido tells him, you fought hard to reach this point, but you cannot change the world. And we, are we getting Kaido backstory at long fucking last? You know, are we going to finally find out Kaido's past? Like in detail? I hope it's not like a several week thing because like it's time for this fight to end, I think. But also Kaido's backstory, I think, is something we've been needing this entire time. Uh, we see a young Kaido who already has his horns. His horns aren't part of his, his devil fruit. They seem to be something he's had his whole life, unless he ate his devil fruit at age, like, 10, which I doubt. Because the line, as Kaido's, like, walking away in this explosion, he did it. He's only 10 years old, and Kaido's already the ultimate soldier. Okay, so he was a child soldier. Uh, and Kaido just thinks, I want more combat. 46 years ago, Vodka Kingdom. I don't think you've ever heard of Vodka Kingdom, but new place. Um, our country can't stop going to war now. We have to win and loot the enemy to pay our heavenly tribute. Otherwise, the world will take away our human rights. Uh, and this actually is a little bit later than that earlier flashback. We're now a little, you know, I guess the earlier flashback was a little more than 46 years ago, because he doesn't look 10 anymore. Uh, and Kaido asks, why does everyone bother to obey those celestial dragons anyway? Okay, here's an interesting thing. Because we're, it seems that we're really getting at why Kaido wanted to be Joy Boy in the first place. Even if at this point he's come to believe the world can't change, as he says to Luffy on the previous page, it's sort of been his whole ideology up to this point. Um, he seems to have started out as this sort of, you know, he, he wants to, to change the world, to stop the celestial dragons from being terrible. And also, you know, I, I like the idea of this country that, like, you know, initially seems kind of warlike in this first bit with Kaido as the ultimate soldier, but, like, even that sort of forced on them by the Celestial Dragons, it's interesting. Um, anyway, uh, we see what seems to be, like, a king uh, who, of, of Vodka Kingdom who tells this older Kaido, I'm enlisting you. You'll join the Navy. And Kaido protests. We see he's, like, chained up by the Marines. Why should I be a government lapdog? Because our country doesn't know what to do with you. Uh, and... The leader of this group of Marines says, 
In exchange for custody of Kaida, this country will receive the right to attend the next reverie. Don't use me as some political pawn! So we also learn now that Kaida was a Marine before he joined Rocks. Uh, but that lasts very long. Uh, Kaido's escaped, or not very long, not very long. Kaido's escaped, and he's given a bounty immediately at 70 million. We captured Kaido. He escaped again? He gets caught when he's hungry, apparently. This is a prison ship, not a cafeteria. Okay, uh, that's an interesting thing. That Kaido, you know, he's so strong, he like, gets caught whenever he wants food, which is fun. Mm. 44 years ago, Pirate Island full of lead. This is where Blackbeard is at the moment, right? Uh, and Kaido, at this point, 15, <coughs> has finished, like, beating up on, on some guys. What is interesting, that means this giant Kaido from the enlistment scene was only 13? All right. He's a giant. For, I mean, he's a giant now, but still. Um, he's so strong. Who is this guy? He's only 15? Uh, and then... Oh, this is like a young white beard. Hey, you little snot. You want to be a pirate? Rox wanted to meet you. What do you say? Um, okay. So here we're seeing Rox's, or uh, Kaido's initial inclusion into the Rox Pirates. Kaido's joined the Rox Pirates. They're unstoppable now. Uh, and then someone who might be a young Big Mom, is my best guess, comes into Kaido's room on the ship. Big trouble, Kaido. Come with me now. We're going to God Valley. Which, of course, is where the Rox Pirates meet their end. Um, and back on Full of Lead, everyone learns this. The Rox Pirates are no more? What kind of joke is this? With all the monsters they've got? Apparently, it was a sailor named Garp who did it. Nah, they just couldn't stand each other. No teamwork in that group. Um, and then this seems to be... Is that, might be a, a, that might be a young Big Mom Bear. Where'd you go, Kaido, you big rat? So, you know, despite the fact that the government seems to have claimed... You know, when we first learned about the Battle of God Valley, that it was all Garp. And I think, didn't Garp imply that it was actually a secret alliance between him and Roger that stopped Rox? Uh, but of course, the government would not let, let that get out. Um, but this seems to imply, and it's, a little, it's unclear how much these random people on Full of Lead know what happened at God Valley. Uh, but someone implied that it wasn't really Garp. It was just the fact that the Roxes all hated each other. Um, and then we have... This is, like, the, the hag lady on Wano, back in the Odin flashback, I think, uh, who was responsible for, like, didn't she have Bartolomeo's devil fruit before, uh, before she died, I think? I think there was one of them had, had the barrier fruit, and the other had Bentham's copy fruit, I think. I think this is the one with the barrier fruit, if I'm not mistaken. Um... In the ten years since that incident, you've become the embodiment of Mike Ka Kaido. Kill, 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 kill. So now we've had another ten years pass since God Valley. Throughout human history, sheer might has solved all problems. Uh, and then... This doesn't seem to be Kaido's line, uh, because Kaido has the next line. But the line here is, of course it has, humans are animals. Survival of the fittest is the law of nature. And then Kaido responds, you're damn right about that. But that line doesn't seem to be in reference, or doesn't seem to be said by um, um, the woman here. So I'm not sure who says that. Maybe one of these other, like, early beast pirates. We also see, this even this early on, King's already joined the crew. This is post the King flashback. Um, and then Kaido has his, you're damn right about that. And other rock remnants will make, will make a name for themselves, too, I'm sure. Uh, and then the woman, whose name I, I think her name is, like, Higurashi or something, uh, right? Um, let me see if I'm right there. Uh, yes, yes, this is Higurashi. Um, so Higurashi then says, weapons are what speak loudest in the world we live in. And I've got a deal you'll want to hear about. Kyo, 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 kyo. But this, if this is 34 years ago, there's another, if my timeline is right, there's at least a decade before he takes over Wano. Because... Odin spends a good couple years doing his, like, dancing in the street for his, his barter with Kaido that he never planned to honor. So I don't think we're anywhere near the point where he takes over Wano, but Higurashi is absolutely talking about Wano there. Um, we're going to take off... Oh, he, so now Kaido is, like, talking to... I guess he like, has control of Full of Lead here. We're going to take all of these pampered noble-born rulers and drag them off of their ivory thrones down to the battlefields with us. 
So we're seeing the the echo of Kaido's earlier, you know, why should we why should we follow the celestial dragons rhetoric here with his followers on on full of lead? Rah! That's what I call equality and freedom. A world where only war decides a man's true worth. Um Oh, and then apparently now we're at, it seems like we're already at Wano at this point. Um because so we have, I wonder where that kid heard it. Yamato dropped Joy Boy's name, is what um, what Kaido says to King. And King then, or then Kaido continues, apparently Odin's desire to open the country is meant to welcome Joy Boy. And King sort of looks, like, perplexed at that. And Kaido goes on, if he's the same as the man you're waiting for, King, then I think I know who Joy Boy is. And King asks, who is he? And then we come back to the present, which is, here's the weird thing. I thought that the, the Joy Boy thing came from Kaido. But that seems to imply that King was the one initially waiting for Joy Boy. Right? That's, that's not what we thought, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. But no more trying to ponder that, because we come back to the present. Uh, as, as that final clash is still ongoing... Um, and the masked CP0 guy, not the one that Kaido beat the shit out of, uh, but another one, the one with, like, the hat and the lines going down his mask, he's flying, he's using that, that air step thing that, that, uh, Cypher Pole has to get away from the island, uh, and Momo is still trying to get, get the island, get Onigashima away from the fight, and Momo declares, Luffy will win, I know he will, and Yamato calls, do it, Momonosuke, and Momo is just desperate now, come forth, flame clouds, do as I command! And we come back to the Fire Festival, as everyone is still celebrating their, their supposed one night of freedom, but will very quickly become their lifetime of freedom. Under the dome, performance floor, we cut back to Kid, who's like, you know, the, the, the island's rumbling around him. Whoa! Ah! Hmm? Um, oh, because the fire, the fire, I don't think, has reached the performance floor yet, because, yeah, on the next panel, we see the fire, and we hear a sound. What's that sound? And we cut back to Raizo and Jinbei, still doing their thing from a few chapters ago. Save everyone! Water of Zo! And the water breaks into the performance floor, you know, swallowing up everyone. Uh, we see Robin and Brooke. Robin calls Robin uh, Some more of the Beast Pirates, I think. Or maybe those are, are minks. I can't quite tell. Uh, we see Beppo and the Heart Pirates. Uh, Apu is washed up as the water starts to drain. We see Law... Uh, as the water, like, approaches him. <coughs> and the water just seems to be putting out all of the fires at last. You know, this is the moment where, where the fire stopped. This seems to be the big culmination climactic moment. I do think this chapter will end with Luffy hitting Kaido and, and bringing him down to the ground. I don't think we're going to get another cliffhanger, especially because I know we're off, we're, uh, off next week. Um... But we see, you know, Usopp falls, still desperately holding on to, to Kiku and Kinemon. Nami and Tama see him as Nami calls, Water! And the water is now made it all the way through Onigashima and is falling below. Um, and, like, we cut to Sanji back at the, the Pleasure Tower with the, the courtesans. And Sanji's, Sanji's calls out for, Osome! And he's still, he's still hold, like, the, one of the girls from earlier is still holding on to him. And he's all hard eyes over this. Where's this water coming from? Uh, but Frankie calls out to him, Hold strong! Don't get swept away! So I guess, uh, I guess Frankie's found Sanji now. Okay. Um, and then we come to the treasure repository, back with, uh, Dendro and Hiyori. Um, as Dendro comforts Hiyori, as it seems like they're about to die, uh, I, I don't think they see salvation anymore. You have been so brave and strong for all of these many years. And we see Roshi's final severed head, I hope, Lady Hiyori. And we flash back to him, like, bowing to her at the start of these 20 years. And she clings to his robe and just weeps at last. Uh, and then the gang, you know, everyone sort of comments as, as the, in the chaos. Ah! Does it feel like the island's falling? And Yamato outside calls, the flame clouds disappeared. We're going down! Yeah, this might be, I think Kaido, I think maybe when, when Luffy hit Kaido on, like, the first page of this chapter, that might actually have been the end. It didn't really feel like the end, but that might have been it, if I'm not mistaken. 
Um, anyway, flame clouds disappear. We're going down. And Momo is just trying to hold on to something. Onigashima is going to fall. And back up, back up top, Kaido is still conscious, but like he's, he's about to lose. And what kind of world can you create, Straw Hat? Tying back to the, his question at the beginning, you cannot change the world. Uh, and Luffy just tells him, I'll make... Uh, and then we cut to, to... Cut back to Momo. Come forth, flame clouds! And in that final moment of desperation, he does it. He creates the flame clouds, shocking both himself and Yamato, and now covers Onigashima and gets it out of the way of the battle, allowing Luffy to do this final hit. A world! Uh, and he's, you know... He's like, his fist is coming closer and closer towards Kaido's, like, mouth hinge. And he's clearly out of breath. <sighs> We're my friends! And he finally makes contact. Contact Can eat as much food! And he, he, you know, we're just getting, we're just watching in, like, slow motion as Kaido takes that final hit. As they want! Tying into, you know, what Luffy's gripe has been with Kaido the whole fucking arc. Since he first made it to Wano and saw the people starve, his goals were the you know in a, in a broader thematic sense for the people to be free, but in the personal thing, the people are starving, and Luffy won't let that happen. Is what is his whole fucking point here, and he hits Kaido's and flying to the ground. Uh, I mean, like he slams into it. We cut back to the fire festival. People are laughing. We see one of those those sky boats says. I want to see mommy. I want to laugh. You know, the people's dreams are here. Uh, and then we cut back to, to Kaido talking to, Ki talking to King in the past. So, like, as, not like visually, but just, you know, in text. As Kaido falls, King, I think I know who Joy Boy is. Who is he? He's the man who shows up to beat me in the future. And we see an image of the young Kaido, um... As back in the present, Kaido continues to fall, and King gives this little smile in the past. In that case, I suppose we'll never see him. But we will, because that's the end of Kaido. We see one last little skyboat beat the scary dragon, along with bringing the Cozy Clan back, but the scary dragon is the important thing. And Kaido is on the ground. Onigashima is also landed now, thanks to Momo. And he's just unconscious as that stomp tromp you know drum beat of, of joy boy continues to beat and luffy also falls to be continued so um there goes kaido there fucking goes kaido um I, I, I want to linger for a moment on, on the Kaido flashback. Because there's some interesting... Like, like there's a way you can shape Kaido as an almost tragic figure. You know, he's initially the sort of force for liberation. Uh, you know, fuck the celestial dragons, fuck the world government. But in the end, he ends up being just as sort of oppressive as everyone else. And, he, and like, you can read that final flashback line as him acknowledging that. You know, I think I know who Joy Boy is. He's the man who shows up to beat me in the future. The real leader, the real, you know, symbol of freedom will kill me. Or will beat me, at the very least. Um, which is interesting. Uh, and I kind of... Like, I'm not sure if Oda really should have explored that more before this point. I'm not sure if we needed that m to be further explored. But it's an interesting thing to sort of... Like, there are kind of been hints of that. I think King's flashback had some hints of that. And when we finally get as close to a Kaido flashback as I think we're ever going to get, I don't really get this... I don't get a bigger sense of... You know, I, I don't feel like that's been more defined than it was in King's flashback. Like, this kind of feels like Kaido's losing this chapter and we never quite got around to giving him a backstory... So let's just throw something together for four pages real fast. And, like, it's interesting. There's a lot of interesting things there. But it does feel a little perfunctory. It feels like we forgot this part. It feels like Oda forgot. Um, and then just slammed it in at the very end. And it works for the most part. 
And, you know, I, I, I love the sort of all of the chaos comes to a head at, at a single moment. You know, the fire is put out. Momo gets the flame clouds. Kaido loses. It's all very, you know, rousing. It's very sort of appropriately climactic for the guy who's kind of been One Piece's big bad since, like, 2012. <laughs> like, ever since Punk Hazard, we've been reaching for K Kaido falling, both in Law's initial plan to fight Kaido, uh, which, of course, was sort of a stealth thing about going after Dofi, as I recall. Um, and then, of course, the Kozuki's goal to stop Kaido. Kaido has been not necessarily, like, the arc villain, but the... The goal, like, the... Not the ultimate goal, of course, but, like, the goal the gang has been immediately striving for in every arc. They get sidetracked by, by Dofi and Big Mom, but, like, their goal has always been Kaido ever since Punk Hazard. And, uh... This is the end of that. And it's... It's majestic to see. I, I can't wait to see the anime get to this point in, like, two years, given how much I think... Like, the anime only adapts, like, half a chapter a week these days, right? So they're like, they're, they're years away from this point. Um, but it's just thrilling to see. You know, this is really the end of so much of One Piece's story. And like, this is the it. This is it. I, I, I can't imagine next chapter not opening with like, you know, what, what's the exact word for a, what's the exact phrase they use in 1042? That has like, you know, Luffy battle on the rooftop, Luffy versus Kaido, winner Kaido. This one being winner Luffy. Um, like that just seems what this is all building towards. This is it. This is the end. Like the fight is over, you know. All that's left for the is for like the narrator to declare it over. And I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's weird to see Kaido, to be done with Kaido. You know what I mean? Like Kaido... You know, to be fair, I only got into the series in, like, 2018 or so, and only got to Kaido, or got to, to Punk Hazard in, like, 2019. But that's still three... Most of the time I've spent with this series has been Kaido as this, you know, looming big bad. And Kaido is, is out. Kaido loses. Luffy wins. I don't know. It's, it's a brave new world out there. Um, the day is saved. Wano is free. After, you know, One Piece's longest arc by, like, you know, one and a half times its nearest competitor. Wano is coming to an end. One, we're, you know, we're at the epilogue. There's still, like, the Marines outside Wano. But still, we're at the end. This is, like, we're, we're moving into epilogue of Wano. Which, like... I always knew it would eventually come, but it's still wild to see it. God. I don't know. M most of this chapter is just, holy shit, can you believe we ever made it this far? Can you believe we finally got to the point where Kaido was defeated, Wano was free? And I don't know what comes next. I don't know. Uh, but I can't fucking wait to find out. So with that said, I'm out of things to say. I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye!